So, Deborah, if um, if you could perhaps um, un unmute yourself and and introduce yourself. I mean, Deborah's basically representing the tourism interest, particularly in Litchfield, Litchfield area, um, where yeah, Gamber and is a huge issue. So, Gam Deborah, over to you to tell us a little bit about that, please. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Um, Deborah Moyle, I'm secretary for the Litchfield Regional Tourism Association. We represent 50 paid members and about 200 enterprises that surround or depend upon the iconic Litchfield National Park for their livelihood. One of those people is Rob Wood, who is, I believe, a co-speaker in this particular segment. Our, our, our strategic number one priority. What many people do not realise is in fact the most visited and popular tourism attraction in the entire Northern Territory. What astounds us as an association is why it hasn't received the level of profile promotion and certainly support in its biggest enemy. We consider Gamba enemy number one and it's only going to get worse because people are going to die if this thing isn't kept under control. And I've, we've often wondered what is it going to take for a coordinated and appropriately resourced, sourced and long-term plan to be implemented by all stakeholders at the same table. We've counted at least five government departments involved in the control of GAMBA, and I think, albeit their best effort, um, we're not getting the outcomes that are needed or wanted, and there's got to be a better way. Um, Rob, Rob Wood is on the ground. Perhaps, Rob, you might want to mention what you're actually seeing on the ground as you visit Litchfield National Park with your patrons. Yeah, at this stage, I mean, when we go for our normal tours, we don't actually interact a great deal um, with the Gamba directly. If you want to step off the main paths of, say, Florence or, or Wongai or whatever and do a bit of bushwalking or um, four-wheel driving or whatever you want to do, then, you know, you're limited there, obviously, with um, you know, the spread of Gamba and all the rest of it. So um, the threat of fire um, really sort of slows that down a bit. Um, introduced a lot more, you know, many of the speakers already mentioned the safety aspect of that and, and we can't really in good conscience and, and liability at the very least of things, take people out in the bush if, if there's con, you know, concern there about fire. The fact that you've got enough people running around starting fires when they shouldn't um, really makes it um, even more dangerous for us to, uh, to offer anything out in um, the more remote areas. Originally, when the park was first gazetted in the early 90s, there was no gamba at, in the park at all. In the early 2000s, we started to notice the gamba growing in a lot of the gravel pits adjacent to the Litchfield Park Road. So we undertook surveys in 2010 and 2014, and that's given us information on not just where the weed is, but also how fast it's been spreading. And at the moment, we can see that 18% of Litchfield National Park is actually infested with this weed. We've used data that we collected on the biology of the plant and also the patterns of spread from the past to develop a model that predicts where we're all spread to in the future. And this model predicts that by 2040, if there's no major management of gamba grass, it will have invaded about half of Litchfield National Park. This includes the very important tabletop area, which includes iconic areas for tourists to visit. Natalie, is that about right from, what, from your memory? Yes, from my memory, that's right, Andy. And um, so Samantha Setterfield and Vanessa Adams uh, in, in 2014 actually costed out a range of management scenarios for Litchfield. So they looked at uh, where Gamba was likely to spread and they then costed out the a range of different management options to um, address those that spread. But it is the best way of getting um, solid management outcomes is having an understanding of where it is. Because I, uh, I always say you can't manage what you don't know. So you have to know where it is so you can prioritise those areas for management. But yes, 40% will be truly um, truly a, you know, a scary scenario within Litchfield. Um, Deborah or Rob, can you just spend a minute or so, a minute or so just talking about what, so you see some of the solutions to actually the question of gamble grass in places like Litchfield? As the, as the top priority for our association in the interests of our members and those others that depend on which the livelihood and the lifeblood of Litchfield National Park, a coordinated approach and it's appropriately resourced. We're looking to host a stakeholders meeting 
So we've identified five government departments, but there are others. And I think each of these departments are doing their best, but they're not doing it in a coordinated way. They're op it appears they're operating in a silo, and they don't know what the, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, which is a waste of resources. It is now, this issue is now fairly high on the political agenda. We're getting some traction in this space, I believe, through the people from Grassroots Gamba. Um, we've come on board as a tourism voice and a business impact, jobs impact, livelihood impact. This is a very real threat. Um, absolutely the way to go is a coordinated approach. Okay. Get everybody at the same table and we're going to initiate that. That's how important we think this is. Thanks everyone for tuning in and all our panel members. To anyone tuning in, you can support the Environment Centre by becoming a Territory Guardian. That's our monthly donor program. Um, and you can sign up to be a donor for as little as $5 a month. This allows us to put on things like this and other program and really campaign for a strong territory that is really active on all sorts of different environmental issues.